This is San Diego News Daily. Hi, I'm Stephen Luke with a look at some of the top local stories we're following right now. A woman accused of killing her stepfather, a Solana Beach butterfly keeper, was sentenced to life in prison today. Jay Jinx was found guilty of first degree murder in the death of Thomas Merriman, who is the co founder of the Encinitas Butterfly Farms, a nonprofit organization focused on the conservation and study of native butterflies. This killing came after she came across nude photos of herself on his computer. She'll be eligible for parole after 25 years. Concern growing after another inmate died at the Otay Mesa Detention Center. A friend of another inmate with no connection to the man who died this weekend, alleging the conditions are brutal at the center and he fears for the inmate's safety. His friend was arrested soon after crossing the U.S.-Mexico border and says the conditions are substandard. He said probably prison is better than this because the way they treat him, when he first got arrested, I'll tell you the journey, he first got arrested, he put him in a place where they call it La Hielera, which transfers to an icebox. It's so cold, you don't get to sleep. And it's so crowded. They have about 200 people in, people in one room where you can only fit about probably 75 max. We reached out to U.S. Immigrations and Customs Enforcement regarding the death and conditions at the facility, but they've so far not responded. San Diego police holding a community meeting at the Otay Mesa Public Library tonight about those smart street lights. The city deactivating them several years ago, mainly due to privacy concerns, but the police department wants to bring them back. NBC 7's Andre Stafford has the details. The police department will be holding a number of community meetings this week, including one here at the Rancho Penasquitos Library tonight. They're hoping to get feedback on their proposal to use street lights equipped with cameras and automated license plate readers as tools to solve crimes. The so-called smart street lights were used in San Diego for several years, but there was a lot of backlash about how they were being used. Privacy advocates successfully fought to have them deactivated, and last year an ordinance was passed requiring greater transparency for the city when it comes to the use of any type of surveillance technology. According to the police department's proposal, the new streetlight cameras will be used to record crimes in public places, namely streets and sidewalks, where no expectation of privacy exists. And each camera will be individually masked to protect areas where people should expect privacy. The department says facial recognition will not be used with this technology. The video cameras will be overwritten after 15 days and automated license plate reader data will be held for 30 days, then deleted. Trust San Diego Coalition member Seth Hall has seen the proposal and says he has a lot of concerns and questions. He plans to show up this week and hopes others will do the same. What we believe is that San Diegans should be really aware of what's going on here. They should be attending these community meetings and asking the important questions of the authorities. You know, how much is it going to cost? Uh, who is going to have access to it and what is it going to be used for, right? And they should be holding our city leadership to account for how they use mass surveillance. The meeting here in Rancho Penasquitos will be held tonight at 5 for a list of all of the other meeting times and locations, as well as how you can weigh in online. Just go to our website, NBC7.com. From Rancho Penasquitos, I'm Audra Stafford, NBC7. A cloudy start to the new work week. Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joining us now with a closer look at San Diego's most accurate forecast. Hey, Stephen. Well, after a, a chilly start this morning and really a cool weekend, we're going to have another cool day today. We'll see a mix of clouds and sunshine out there. Low 60s to near 60 at the coast and inland valleys. For the mountains, a little breezy mid 40s overnight. Clouds are going to hang around. Watch what happens, though, as we head through the week. Northern California, still a very active weather pattern. We're going to be dry until the end of the week. Then we have a rain chance looking like Friday into Saturday. Until we get there, though, temperatures are going to stay pretty cool. I'll be watching that as we approach the weekend. We're still quite a few days away. Your 10 day forecast coming up. The CDC warning of a troubling new illness seen spiking in emergency rooms all across the country. Coming up, the symptoms you need to look out for. And the Birch Aquarium caring for dozens of these. What are these? They are rare and delicate newborns. More on the miraculous arrival of baby weedy sea dragons. Coming up. We'll see you soon. Calling all morning people. The crack of dawn. Up and at them. Ready to get this day started, people. We have the team for you.
Wake up with NBC 7 News today, starting at 4.30. We were made for mornings. Keeping you in the know before anybody else is up. With accuracy you can't get anywhere else, no matter how early. Bringing you coverage you count on. Like only morning people can do. NBC 7 News today, weekday mornings, starting at 4.30. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Stephen Luke. Welcome back. San Diego's Roman Catholic Diocese faces another lawsuit, this time from its own insurance company. The suit accusing the diocese of violating terms of the insurance policies and arguing the company should not have to pay any sex abuse claims. The Catholic Mutual Relief Society wants a judge to order it has no duty to back the diocese or any parish against claims of sexual abuse by the clergy from 1958 through 1990. The San Diego Diocese is sending us this statement saying they oppose the lawsuit. It reads in part they are disappointed and remain determined to do everything to fulfill their responsibility to survivors of sex abuse. The CDC right now is tracking a recent surge in severe stomach flu cases, sending a lot of people to emergency rooms nationwide. Now, the agency says the number of norovirus cases nearly doubled from 8.7% to 17% since January. The ultra contagious virus can cause days of vomiting, diarrhea and fever. Doctors say hand sanitizer does not kill the virus, and so they're stressing good old fashioned hand washing soap and water to do the trick. Some people say, hey, I've been vomiting for several days. I can't keep anything down. The treatment is supportive care. So things like staying hydrated, resting when you can. The CDC also warning about Shigella. It's another stomach bug becoming increasingly drug resistant over the last decade. The CDC calls it a serious public health threat. Harassing sea lions is a federal offense and a little girl's encounter late last month has now gone viral on TikTok, reminding everyone of why they shouldn't get too close. Little girl in the purple, you can leave now. Thanks. You heard it there. The lifeguards asking this little girl and her family to leave La Jolla Cove after she was apparently seen throwing rocks and sand at one of the sleeping sea lions. The video posted six days ago, but already has been seen more than 2.7 million times. Just yesterday, a huge group of sea lions lined a rock near the cove and lifeguards and rangers were on duty. there, reminding people to give them space despite signs telling people the rules. Sometimes there are a few people who get a little too close. For me, it's nonsense. We're the parents. I mean, really, the parents should be a little bit more like, hey, you don't, it's exactly, you don't even know the animal. You, know how, you don't know how they're going to react. It's like Darwin is up above looking down and saying, you're next. Well, aside from the obvious danger, harassing sea animals violates the Marine Mammals Protection Act could cost you an $11,000 fine or even jail time. Meteorologist Sheena Parveen with a closer look at San Diego's most accurate forecast right after this. Only one team in San Diego is certified most accurate. NBC7's First Alert Weather. What does that mean for you? Helping you plan ahead with our hour-by-hour -hour forecast. And knowing exactly when rain will move in. First Alert Weather is coverage you count on. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. For today, it's going to be cool. We'll see a mix of clouds and sunshine again. Right around 60 for the coast and inland valley, so unseasonably cool for this time of the year. Kind of a continuation of the weekend. Mountains mid-40s, pretty breezy in the mountains. The next couple days, we stay near 60 for the coast and inland valleys. Little bump in temperatures Thursday. Friday, Saturday, though, we actually do have a chance for some showers. And as we head into the weekend, we do spring the clocks forward one hour. Mountains looking pretty good this week until we hit Friday, Saturday with the rain chance. And so far, it's looking like rain, not snow in the mountains. All right, Sheena, thank you. The Birch Aquarium celebrating the arrival of these little guys and gals. 70 tiny newborn weedy sea dragons is what you're looking at here. It's a unique species of fish related to seahorses and pipe fish. Incredibly difficult to breed in captivity. These babies started hatching back on February 26th and it continued through this past Thursday. Baby Wheaties are about an inch long, way less than a gram. They will eventually grow up to 13 to 15 inches long. More coverage to count on at NBCSanDiego.com. We'll see you soon.